going on guys welcome back to the channel it's a nice fall afternoon here in northern Alabama at Southeast Vintage and today we've got the big block CT 70 class of 1969 back up on the rack so as most of you know I've got a, uh, a modern style inverted front fork set up on that um, with a disc brake on the front and I've had it on there three four years I, I don't remember how long but it's it's run its course it's an earlier earlier version I've been working with uh, Bart Motoco out of California, and he's come up with a V2 model of that front suspension setup, which is highly superior to what I have now. So I've got one of those today, and I'm gonna show you how to install it. And here we go with the big block up on the rack in the cleanest garage in North Alabama. Like I say, if your garage is perfectly clean, you're probably not doing anything. So, um, before you run off um, and get all weird on me, I'm not going to make you sit through and watch me remove this existing front end. We are going to skip right past that. I'll do it off camera. But I am going to take you in for a quick look at the Bart Moto kit in the box and kind of show you what it comes with. And then we're going to jump right into the install. All right, let's see what we got in the box here from Bart Moto Co. All right. Just as a disclaimer, this was covered in much more packaging material, but I went ahead and removed that for the purposes of speeding up this video a bit. Um, and here you go, here's his website. And he is very, very, very generous with these stickers. You always get a nice little bundle of them with any order. Um, so this is his, what he's calling the V2 of his inverted front suspension uh, setup for the CT70. Um, he's made quite a bit of improvements to this, uh, especially compared to the one that I currently have on my CT70, which I've had on there, I don't know, three, four years now. But uh, like I said, this is packaged very well. Um, here's your, comes with your front axle um, with, with spacer. Um, you've got your, um, your front brake caliper, um, and then your, your master cylinder slash lever for the handlebars. Um, you've got your, uh, your front hub with brake rotor um, and yes the rotor is installed backwards I'm assuming to make it easier to ship so we'll talk about that later but that's gonna have to be flipped around um, and then of course you get a new speedometer cable um, and then in this small box here is your speedometer uh, drive gear with the seal on it um, and then last but not least um, we have the actual forks themselves, and these are what he calls the blackout edition, um, meaning that they're all black. And right up front, you can see that he's up, he's running the much better uh, tapered roller bearings, uh, top and bottom. They come with the races you need and everything. Um, so, just as a comparison to the set that I currently have on my CT70, they are like a caged roller bearing, um, similar to the stock loose bearings, but they have a cage, and because there's a cage, there's only about half the number of uh, ball bearings in there. And to be honest with you, they look like something you would put on a bicycle. They do not look like something you would put on a motorcycle. So this is definitely a, a nice upgrade he's made. And then for the icing on the cake here, you can see these are adjustable. These are 25 position rebound adjustable now. Um, which is really going to make a huge difference. Um, he's really went the extra mile, and you can see he's even got his got his company name there on the top cap. These are a really, really, really nice piece. So that's it. Again, uh, here's the Bart Moto Co. website. If you're interested in grabbing these, um, that's how you get to it. All right, let's jump back in here and get ready to put this thing together. All right, guys, I just want to touch on a couple more things here before we jump into installing this. Um, I really want to take the opportunity to kind of highlight some of the improvements on this V2 version of this setup and also just go through real quick um, all the tools that I've set out ahead of time that we're going to use to do this. Um, that way, if you're following along when we put this on there, um, you won't be chasing tools down. You can have everything ready to go and maybe there's a tool you don't have that you need to go out and buy. So um, let's go ahead and start off with this front hub assembly. And yes, this rotor is still on there backwards for shipping purposes. We're going to go through and flop that around here later on. Um, but one of the big things to note 
is that this is actually now properly machined so that the wheel is centered. Um, it, the older versions of that hub had an issue where the wheel was a little off center. Didn't really affect rideability, but it was kind of a pain to get set up. And then also, um, just of note, the BART Moto Kit does not come with the, the hub to um, rim bolts. So you need to make sure you've got some of those ready to go. These are off my old setup that we're just going to reuse. Um, next thing here, um, we already covered the tapered bearing setup, but I want to kind of point out this opening right here. Um, this is where your steering stop rides, and obviously this is what stops it on each side from left to right. Um, the older version of this setup that I had, um, this opening was a half inch shorter. Uh, which didn't really affect rideability much, but it was really a pain in the butt if you were trying to like maneuver the bike around in the garage because it really did not turn very sharp and it was you had to do like 20 point turns um, if you were like trying to get into a tight spot in your garage or your trailer or whatnot. So I'm really happy that they've, they've corrected that and I'm excited to see you know what that looks like. Um, another thing is your speedometer drive gear here. You can see it's got a little notch in it and the previous version had that. But what it didn't have is a corresponding tab on the lower part of the fork to hold that notch to keep that from turning when the wheel was turning. So essentially the only thing you had to keep that from moving was your speedometer cable, which obviously was not ideal. Uh, it worked, but it just it wasn't the right way to do it. So I'm glad that they've put that tab on there, which will go into that notch and keep that from spinning. Um, Another improvement is the way in which the handlebars mount to the top triple clamp. Um, if you look at these two holes right here, that's where your handlebars mount. Um, and in my case, I was using a original style CT70 mount. Obviously, it's not original. It's a Chinese clone. But um, with the other version, these holes were a quarter inch back. This is the back as mounted on the bike this is the front so because of that that your top nut here interfered with the mount and i had to clearance that well now these are moved a quarter inch forward which is just enough for those bar mounts to fit on here without interfering with that top nut so that was really nice too and then again you know we, i've showed you earlier these are adjustable and then bart motoco's got his his company branding on there um so with that being said, let's dive into the tools real quick that I'm going to use to do this, and hopefully this helps you all out, um, and I really hope you're following along when you install yours. Um, so, of course, the 3 8 ratchet, 17-millimeter um, wrench, 14-millimeter wrench, uh, which will be used for your front axle, 13-millimeter um, wrench, which will be used for your bolts that hold your caliper on. Um, I've got a 10-millimeter. That's for my my hub to rim bolts um, and then an eight millimeter which is for your two bolts on the bottom of your uh, brake control slash master cylinder assembly um, also a couple corresponding sockets to the wrenches just in case i decide, decide i want to go with a socket and then i've got my three eighths drive impact um, and i will caution you on using that for assembly um, these impacts do not have a torque setting, so it's pretty much all or nothing or you control the trigger. So be careful with that. I really like to use these for disassembly, and I, I'll use them for assembly, but I'm very careful about that final torque. I'll usually do that by hand because you just never know. Um, another interesting tool I have here is the, um, this tool here does many things. Um, it tightens that nut there. It also tightens this nut um, slash dust cap using this portion and this is for uh, this will work on like your uh, key switch um, here like on a on an OEM type setup um, this is from uh, Stewart Cycle and ATV out of Arkansas I'll drop a link in the description for it it's made in the USA very handy to have um, it beats the heck out of having a big socket for that that you probably only use for that and then you know usually using like a punch or something with a hammer um, and then the last thing we'll talk about before we jump in here is uh, the bearing and race setup so you've got your your top bearing and race lower bearing and race 
I'm going to have to uh, pop this tr top triple clamp off to get these out of here so I can put all this together. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these bo both of these races and I'm going to put them in the freezer overnight. Yes, you caught me. This I'm not doing this video all in one setting if I'm putting these in the freezer overnight. That will cause that uh, metal to contract or get smaller, which will make it much easier to get down in here when we go to install it. Um, along with that, I've, I've found one of my a socket I have. It just happens to be a one and a quarter inch socket um, that perfectly matches the size of that race that I'm going to use to uh, assist and driving those races in to the, the head tube on the frame. Um, I've got a rubber mallet because I'm not beating on my socket with a hammer. Um, and your mileage may vary a little bit on that depending on the brand of socket you use and the, you know, the, the thickness of the walls and all that. But if you've got a fairly decent set of sockets, you probably got one that'll work. Um, I've also got a brass hammer here that I may use to, you know, gently tap on the race if I need to do some final seating along with the punch. Um, if you're wondering why, why a brass hammer, well, brass typically will, is, it's softer than steel, so it won't damage the steel when you're, you know, tapping on it. And I did miss two tools here. Um, I've got a five millimeter hex driver, which we'll use to uh, take those bolts out there to get this top clamp off. And then, of course, we'll also use it to tighten those once we get to final assembly. You know, you should go through anything on here that you haven't touched. You need to make sure that you tighten it up because it probably isn't torqued all the way down. And then I've got a six millimeter hex driver, which we'll use to remove these three bolts on the brick disc rotor to flip it around. So I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, I guess it's time to put this thing on, so stay tuned. All right, guys, we're back. It's the next day. The bearing races have been sitting in the freezer overnight, and it's time to put them in the head tube. Um, I want to note a couple things here before we put those in. If you removed a pre-existing setup off of here that did not have the tapered roller bearings, then you need to remove the races that were in here, whether it be the this, this factory stock ones or whatever you had from your previous setup. If you did not knock a bearing race out of the top and bottom of this, stop what you're doing and knock those out first before you try to put these other ones in because they will not work. So let me go grab one of them out of the freezer and we'll go ahead and get it knocked in there real quick. All right, when you put these in, they're tapered. And for the top one, you want the widest portion of the taper facing up and the smallest portion of the taper facing down. And I'm going to go ahead and, and when you do this, make sure that you've got them fairly squared up when you put them in there before you start pounding on them because it'll make it much easier. And see, that's almost going in by hand. And I'm going to tap it a little bit with my brass hammer just to kind of get it started. And I'm going to work it through there. And then I'm going to take this block of wood. It wasn't in my tool list, but I added it overnight. And I'm going to drive that on home. you hear how that sounds different that's because that is fully seated okay so that's the top one just like that and there will be a slight lip uh, sticking up above the frame that's fine um, you can look down in there and you can see that it's there's still just a small tiny gap that I need to close up on that so let me do that real quick Okay, you can see down in there, and you shouldn't see a gap between the bottom of the race and that lip that's inside the head tube, and we do not have a gap. And notice that I was not getting medieval with that. You'd be very careful with that when you're, when you're tapping it in there. I didn't even have to use my socket. If I wanted to, I would use the flat side of my socket, which would just give me a, even a more even application, but it's in there. So let me repeat that same process for the bottom real quick. I had to get that out of the freezer. Same deal with this one. You get it started by hand and as square as you possibly can and then start working it in there. I'm gonna use my block of wood again. I'm actually gonna go ahead and try to shoot that in the rest of the way with this socket this time. Now, 
And so you do have to work at that a little bit, uh, but it would be much harder if you didn't have that in the freezer overnight. Grab my Cyclops light, get a look in there. Um, yeah, this one's still got quite a ways to go. Um, so let me work that real quick and I'll get right back with you. Okay, so we got that bottom race up in there as well. Um, I didn't mention that. That one obviously goes in the opposite orientation of the top one. Um, also, the the front fork setup on the steering stem already had the lower bearing pressed on the steering stem. So I just went ahead and greased that in place. Um, I've applied a little bit of grease here, a little bit of grease on the lower, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grease this, this uh, upper bearing real quick. I think you all probably know how to grease bearings, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it real quick on, on camera. Now, these are like super critical. It's not like a bearing that's constantly spinning, but they need to be greased. So we'll go ahead and take care of that real quick. This isn't any special grease. It's just the usual grease you buy at an auto parts store. Okay. So that's ready to go, um, and that's going to drop in on top when we start assembling things with the tapered side facing down. Um, you'll see it's pretty self-explanatory once you drop it in there. So let's go ahead and let's get this front end on there. Um, let's make sure we have our first um, nut that's got to go on the top ready to go because that's what's going to hold it up in there. and. This has got the, the four slots and then a dust cover. This goes on first. Um, and you probably remember earlier, I've got this tool to tighten that down. So let's get this on there and get to moving. I'm gonna put a glove on for that bearing because I do not want grease all over my hands for this entire installation. All right. So you can see that I've already got some grease on that lower. And this is, it's got a bit of weight to it. You, you could remove these shocks off if you wanted to. Um, I just chose not to do that. Um, now's when you drop that upper bearing in, as I mentioned, and then this goes on there. And you get that snug down by hand and then we'll come back and tighten it with the wrench. We've got that hand tightened. And the way I like to do these is I like to work that nut and tighten it until I feel like I've probably got it too tight and then I tighten it a little bit more. Um, hasn't failed me yet, so let's do that real quick using my tool. You see how that fits right on there now. If we didn't have these shocks in the way, this would be a lot easier, but I think you kind of get the point. And of course, be careful that you don't scratch up your paint. And what I'm doing is I'm just turning the whole thing and holding the wrench still. So you might, we might reach a point with this uh, because we've got these shocks on here that, there we go. Obviously, if you can't turn this, you've got this too tight. Um, but I'm going to get just a little bit more on there if I can find a spot where that wrench will still fit on there with these shocks. Ah, looks like we're running out of options here, guys. So I guess if you're going to use this tool and, and you plan to use it comfortably, you want to remove those shocks. But I've got that pretty darn tight. Um, and I'm pretty comfortable with that. So um, let's go ahead and now is the time, if you have headlight mounts that you need to put on here, now's the time to slip those on before you put that top clamp on there. So obviously these don't come with the Bart Moto kit, but I'm, I know he sells them. These are being reused for my previous setup. So I'm just gonna get those in place. Actually, let me loosen them up just a bit. 
you don't want to scratch up the finish on these. That would be in a bit. So you take your time with this. Like I said, you don't want to scratch these up. I tell you what, you can see I'm struggling. I'll, I'll just go ahead and do this off camera real quick and we'll jump back in once I've got these slid down on here. Don't want to bore you with the details. Okay, guys, we got those brackets on there. That turned out to be quite the fiasco. They were just, just a tight fit and I wanted to take my time to make sure I didn't scratch up the finish of the shocks. I did, I went ahead and uh, off camera, I just kind of test fitted the top triple clamp. And I, as I suspected, the, the shock uh, alignment here was off just a little bit um, and they didn't, aligned flush with the top of this when everything was assembled. So I went ahead and loosened these clamps up on the sides here just a bit. So when I put this top clamp on, I'll be able to make those adjustments. And just in case you get your kit and everything lines up out of the box, I will note that these uh, bolts that hold these clamps here um, were barely tight. So like I said earlier, make sure you go back and tighten those up. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and drop this on there real quick. That should pretty much and it does, falls right into place. Now, before you go and align all this and clamp this, these shocks tight in the triple trees, you want to tighten this top nut here first. And the reason for that is the, the clamping force of this nut, or the, the triple clamp on that nut below that we previously installed, it acts as like a double nut scenario. So it keeps that from loosening. So if you align all this and you tighten these and then you go to try to tighten that, it may not actually clamp down on there the way you think it will. And it might be okay for a while, but as you ride the bike over time, that's gonna get loose and you're gonna start feeling some wobble in your, uh, your front fork. So everything right now clamp wise is loose and I'm gonna go ahead and cinch this nut down real good. Again, with my tool that we so love to use. Make sure you get her, get her torqued down good. Um, okay, I think that's good. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna um, align these shocks with the top of the triple clamp. So what I'm looking for here is, actually this one's, I have this just enough to, see, there you go. So what I'm looking for is that the silver part of that nut uh, looking deal. I want it to be flush with the black of the triple clamp, which we are. So let me cinch that down real quick. And of course, you're going to want to do the exact same position for the other side. Okay, so that's just one that's taken care of. Let me pop around here to the other side. We'll do this the same way. Don't worry about whether if these are, are turned wrong or anything because you can't turn them wrong because you can move this lower portion to line up for your axle. So snug that, okay. All right, I'm happy with that. They're lined up now. Um, I'm just gonna go through real quick and tighten these up I don't know if there's a torque spec for this. I don't know what it is. Um, just be mindful that these bolts are going into aluminum. Um, so you're obviously not going to want to put a three foot bar on the end of your ratchet and torque these down. Just, you know, till it feels like it's tight. Repeat process on the other side. And I can already tell <laughs> this thing, remember we talked about the steering stop, we've got a much broader range of motion there than we ever had with our old setup. Whoops, 
That's not the one I want to tighten. It's that one. It's my headlight, headlight clamp. Okay. So there's this bracket on here. Um, my other setup came with it as well, and I always thought it might be a horn bracket or something, but the more I think about it, um, because these are probably fashioned after the clone bikes, I think this is some type of a mount for a steering lock, which we don't have. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. There's two five millimeter hex bolts in there. We're just gonna slip that out of there real quick. We do not need that, at least I don't. So clean that up a little bit. Okay. All right, guys, something was bugging me and I figured out what it was. So I had to go do a little bit of off camera shenanigans. I meant to route this brake line for the front brake caliper through here before I put that top clamp on, um, because otherwise there's no way to get it through there either by putting that through or the caliper, it won't fit, which means you got to break loose the brake line. These are supposedly pre-bled from the factory. So I figured why screw that up, but you can kind of see that's where that's going to go now. So, hey, lucky for you guys, I just saved you the hassle. Um, hopefully you watched the whole video before you followed along. Um, also now is a good time if you're going to run a front fender um, to put that on. Um, I'm running a stock style um, fender and Richard is apparently fighting with funnels. Um, let me take care of that real quick. Okay, sorry about that. Our parts manager, Richard, got a little bit out of control. and We had to uh, see him out of the building. Uh, anyway, getting back to what I was talking about. Um, I'm running a, a stock style. It's a Chinese repop fender. Um, and the holes that are in here, they do not line up with the holes that are here. So you'll have to, you'll have to figure that out on your own. I had to drill a couple holes. This is off my previous setup. Um, not going to get too deep into this, just letting you know that it can be done. And it's of course going to vary based on what type of fender you want to run. And these are just a standard M6 bolt that go in here. So let me slap this on real quick. Okay, um, I was just finagling with it there a little bit because the bolts didn't feel like they were going in straight. And remember, I told you this is all aluminum, so the last thing you want to do is cross thread that. And then, yeah, I did use my impact gun to put those on because I have a calibrated trigger finger. Um, so I think we're about ready to assemble our front hub and wheel assembly. So let me grab the, the front rim and tire and bring it over here to this other table and we'll throw this together real quick. This won't take long. Again, this is from my previous setup. This is a 12 inch aluminum rim. <clears throat> but if you remember, I told you we needed to flip that brake rotor around. So now's a good time to do that um, with the six millimeter hex. This is obviously pretty straightforward. Three bolts, pop them out, flip this over, put it back together. Notice how tight things aren't, which is fine. It's just you need to make sure that you're aware of that when you get your kit, that you go through and check everything. I'm going to torque these by hand. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to throw this wheel together real quick. Um, now, again, like I mentioned, the hardware does not come with the BART Moto kit. Um, so that's essentially on you. Um, but anyhow, 
let's get this down here. If you've worked on more than one CT70, you know how this works. So there's a there's a real a, a cut on on the other side here where that nut whoops that nut goes in, so you don't have to actually hold it with a wrench. But got a little out of whack here, so let me just get one started before I start flipping things around. <laughs> When you're doing this, um, pay close attention to where the rim mates up with the hub. Um, you've got a, there's going to be a gap there, and it's a pretty tight fit. You've got to pull that down and close that gap, otherwise it's going to be all wobbly. So just kind of watch that as you're tightening. Make sure you see that gap close and that it seats up. So I think, yeah, we're good. All right, this is ready to go on. Um, now we've got our, our axle um, with spacer, and then also we have our speedometer drive gear that we talked about earlier. And if you look in there, there's two little prongs that stick out. And then if you look on your, your hub, there's two notches. Well, when you fit this on there, those need to seat down in those notches, okay? And the easiest way to tell is, number one, by, you can kind of feel it. Number two, turn that and watch inside there and make sure that the speedometer drive piece is turning when you turn that. If you don't get that on there correctly, you'll bend that up and you're, just gonna, you're not gonna be happy with yourself. So for the other side, this is where the spacer goes. And you should be able to, yeah, you can pop that in there and hopefully that'll stay put during assembly. Um, so now we're going to go um, potentially wrestle this on here. <laughs> so let's see how this goes. Let me carry this over here to the front of the bike. Now remember I, I mentioned this tab here that has to catch that um, notch in your speedometer drive gear. So really what you want to kind of do is come in from the back um, when you fit this. And I would normally um, cheat a little bit and lower my, my main jack down there uh, to do this, but I'm gonna try to do this without going through that extra trouble. Um, and I'm also gonna start my axle bolt from this side, which will help to capture and hold that in place while I'm getting it rest of the way through. You can see this is not exactly easy with one person, but it can be done. All right, I think, well, shoot. I am going to lower this down and put this on. Hold on a minute. Okay, guys, I cheated a little bit. I lowered my, my, my center jack here. And, you know, I don't expect that everybody's going to have the same setup I have, so you'll just have to kind of work that the way you want, or better yet, get you a, another set of hands to help you and you probably wouldn't have this problem. But I've already got this um, ready to pretty much stab in there. Um, and if you look right here, you can see where that, uh, that tab is about to lock in on the speedometer gear. So let me stab that axle through there real quick. Of course, it's got to also, you know, be lined up on the other side as well. And like I said, this is just a 
matter of getting her through and there she is okay so if you look here now you can see our speedometer gear is locked in place it's not going to to rotate at all and previously we didn't have that until bart motoco came out with this design and then also note that you can see the spacer on this side on the brake rotor side um, and then of course it's just a matter of putting your axle nut on um, be, I would, this is a, a like a nylock nut, um, so in a way it's kind of self-locking, I guess you could say. It's not like the, the original style that uses a castle nut with a cotter pin, which you know is not coming loose. It's your preference. Um, I may come back later and put a little bit of Loctite on this, but um, you know, for now I'll just run it the way it's designed. So let me tighten up that front axle real quick. I'm going to get this bad boy back up in the air, too, so my strap is holding it. Okay, there we go. So, again, uh, the axle nut is a 17, and your the, the axle bolt head itself is a 14. And you should be able to cinch this down pretty good because everything, the spacer and whatnot, is riding on the bearing. Yeah, I see. So, again, um, I, there may be a torque spec for this somewhere, but use your best judgment. It's your bike. You're the one riding it. Do you want the front wheel to fall off? Probably not. Okay. That takes care of that. Next item here is the brake rotor which this uh this brake handle and master cylinder's got a little little rubber wedge in there for shipping um, that you'll need to remove after we get done and then there's also um, a piece of packing between your brake pads on the caliper to keep them from closing so in a perfect world um, we'll take that little piece of packing out of here and this will slip on without any compression or anything like that being required of the brake caliper. Um, now, if you take a look at how this goes on, your caliper is actually, let me grab, get these bolts out of here. And I, I know some of this stuff is self-explanatory, but you never know. You run into things, you're just like, hmm, it doesn't go out here. It goes on the inside, which means you've got to slip it over the the brake rotor and then line up the holes and then run your bolts in. So let's go ahead and give that a shot and see how that goes. This is that plastic wedge that was between the brake pads. And just like that, she's on. That's awesome. All right. Again, you know, don't cross thread anything when you take your time. This has got a little bit of tension on it um, from that brake line kind of pulling on it. So it'd be easy to, to get things out of whack if you're not careful. I think, yeah, those are a, those are a 13 millimeter. And I'm going to go ahead and zip those on really quick. All right, um, and one thing we'll do after we get everything, you know, back, situated back together, um, because this is a stock style fender, if you remember, there's this clip that goes on there that normally would house your front brake cable and your front your speedometer cable, not front, it's the only one you have. Um, I'll put that on later, but just so you know, um, that is an option if you're running this style of fender, and it really cleans this up and keeps that brake line in place. So, you know, short of, uh, slapping the handlebars back on we're pretty much to the point where we can take this off the stand and at least just do a a quick you know reveal in the garage and see how we like it so let me get those bars back on there real quick um, and then we'll talk about mounting this to the bars and get this sucker off the rack and see how it looks yeah
You remember what I said about the clearance here with this, this top nut and this bar mount? If you take a look at that, you can see that there would be no interference here if we had not clearanced that. There's plenty of room between the nut and those mounts, which is another nice feature they, they incorporated by moving those bolt holes a quarter inch forward. All right, I'll get those, I'll get those tightened up in a minute. Um, and then one last thing, uh, we're not gonna put it on now, but this is, I hope, self-explanatory. Speedometer cable up to your speedometer. Um, this cable comes with the kit, of course. Um, I believe I'll probably run mine back behind something like this and then up into my headlight bucket so it's not you know sticking up out front and we're also i've got my my headlight bucket set off set up off the other um, deal that i had we're not going to put that on today for this because that's not part of the bart moto kit i know he sells those um and the same with wiring uh, i know he sells wiring if, if you all want to see some stuff on that i'd be happy to make another video on how all that works as well later on down the road uh, so at this point, I let me tighten these uh, nuts up on the handlebar mount, and then I'll get right back with you, and we'll put this on. Okay, got the handlebars bolted back on. Um, last thing we're going to cover before we get this bad boy off the rack here is your brake le lever slash master cylinder. Um, these are, I, like I said, they're eight millimeters uh, bolts on the back of here on the clamp, and I'm not going to permanently fix this just yet um, until I know exactly where I'm going to position my, my throttle grip again when I put it back together. So for now, I'm just going to kind of mock these up on there for the purposes of this video. Um, this is obviously pretty self-explanatory here. Um, I think that'll about do it. Um, give me a second to get this off the, the table here and we'll get it on the ground and get some impressions um, out of this setup. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, we got her down off the table. Um, this is the moment that I know I've been waiting for and hopefully everyone else. So, you know, first impressions, uh, I like it. Um, right out of the box, this front brake is, is spot on. Like. My other one didn't work nearly as good, you know, right out of the box. And I'm not even riding a bike yet. I can tell it's better. Um, right now, I've got our, our top dials here um, set on, I guess, what you'd call zero. They're, they're all the way counterclockwise as far as they'll go. Um, and from what I understand, there's 25 clicks each on each one. So, you know, you probably won't be able to, to feel what I can feel. Um, but you might be able to see it a little bit on camera. But you know, this is this is with this is what I'm going to call zero, right? And I'm going to crank it up to ten. I'm going to do ten clicks on each side. Okay, that's ten. That's a setting of ten. And I don't know if you can see that, but. Definitely a little quicker on the rebound there. Um, and it, it feels a little firmer. So I'm gonna just take it from there straight to 25. Yep, that's it, that's 25 clicks. And I apologize for Richard, the parts manager outside the door whining. He, he really wanted to be part of this, but I told him like, you ain't got no thumbs, you can't turn these knobs. So sorry, but we don't need your help right now. Okay, so that's full max setting of 25. Oh yeah, that's really stiff there. Yeah, matter of fact, it almost sticks down, it's so stiff. So you see it come back up when I loosened them. So I'm gonna go all the way back to zero um, for now. Um, and then once I take it for my first ride, then I'll go ahead and I'm gonna dial this in. You know, and it, This is probably gonna be largely a, a matter of personal preference. Um, plus, you know, depends on what your setup is. Like I've got a, a 140 in here, which is obviously heavier than a standard, you know, 70cc CT70 engine. So my bike's probably a little bit heavier right out the gate, so that's going to make a difference. So you'll have to figure that out once you get your stuff dialed in. Um, but overall, I am I am 
more than happy with this setup for Bart Motoco. And, you know, circling all the way back, I'll drop a link in the description to the products that I used from Bart Motoco on this. And um, I encourage you to check out his website. He's got a lot of other, um, not, not only cool stuff, but from what I'm seeing, some pretty high quality stuff. And I, he's gonna be my go-to guy for a while. Um, so again, as I always say, um, if you like what you're seeing here, uh, please subscribe and thanks for watching.